in his ministry. And in this day, we cannot claim to be doing the works of Jesus if we do not sustain the same example. We saw that power is gift-based. And the scripture of authority for that position was Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We saw that authority is relationship-based. If you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it happens according to what you have said, it is proof of the fact that you command authority. And that authority happens to be a product of being with the Lord. Number two, under power. Power is boisterous. Power is an explosive device. Power is noisy. Power is disruptive. As much as we like to have order in church services, we must make accommodation for the explosive dimensions of power. Even the ushers need to be equipped to expect some disruptions that they will be trained to manage. Because that's the nature of power. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8... Acts chapter 8. If you have played chess before, anybody here that has played chess? Okay, maybe we should say draft. (laughs) The game of chess is about territory. And I I actually advise that we play it once in a while so that we can deepen our context for territory, our perspective for territory. So what is happening in the book of Acts, most, most of the book of Acts, is a game of chess. So the devil now plays his own card, puts a man on the scene, and then God raises a man and puts a man within, that man he has raised within the vicinity of the opponent. And then we'll see issues of territorial takeover. So God raised you and put you in your city because there was something that was there before you showed up. Now, in the book of Acts chapter 8, we see Philip the evangelist. Philip the evangelist was going to take over the territory that was zoned to a certain sorcerer. The thing about heaven's interest on Samaria was not just that it was highly populated. You know, there are a lot of analysis that are done when you want to cite a church, you check the... <laughs> so the interest of heaven about Samaria was not just the, was not its population, but there was an ancient installation of the kingdom of darkness that was currently held by a certain man called Simon Now, that's verse 9. Let, let's, let, let's see verse 9. Meanwhile, the reason why we're doing this is because I'm trying to establish the fact that power is noisy. You should be able to accommodate some noise. I mean, noise disruptiveness that is occasioned by the utensil called power. Not just noise, not hype. There's a difference because there's so much hype in a lot of quarters these days, which is not the kind of noise that the Holy Spirit generates. He said there was a, a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. So this is the wisdom dimension. This was where I was supposed to come yesterday to balance my presentation, but we were short of time and I had not yet discovered this countdown yesterday. Hallelujah. I was not briefed. 
And the technocrat himself was here, so it, it was a very difficult situation. <laughs> Amen. Very difficult situation. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great man. Yeah. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying, this man is the great power of God. So there was a way he sold himself. He sold himself as some great one. That was the idea. Using sorcery, using bewitchment. Now this was the feedback that he got from his attempt. He earned the, the title of what? The great power of God. Divinity was part of it. He was a sorcerer, but he earned the title of the great power of God. Do you know, do you know, are you aware that there are people like this? In fact, people like this have multiplied in Lagos. And just in case you are laboring in Lagos, listen to me. They are competitors. Because branches of other churches are branches of the same company. So they are not our competitors. The real competitors are men like Simon that have multiplied themselves across the landscape. And you see, they profit, they profit by, by presenting himself, themselves to the people as of God. So the title they get, the honor they get, is the kind of honor that is supposed to be given to a major messenger of God. They were able to end that title. Meanwhile, the operating system, the undercurrent of their service delivery is bewitchment, is sorcery. So this was the anomaly that God wanted to settle for which he deployed Philip the Evangelist to Samaria. So it was not a population strategy matter. It was an issue of impersonation that had to be dealt with severely, brutally. Now, do you realize that the reputation of Simon was public? It was, it was everywhere. So, a device needs to be created that can create public attention, public notice. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We are too quiet. We are men of the world. We are men of the world. We can't take that. We are, but we are quiet. We need to generate some noise. In the name of Jesus. I know you will not say amen. I know. Amen. <laughs> we, we, have, we have become pious <laughs> and sanctimonious. Mm. But our ancestors were people that had the capacity to generate turbulence for the positive, for, for positive reasons, for good reasons. So this was the issue. There was an issue of impersonation on ground and the glory of the honor that is of the Lord, is being accorded a sorcerer. And, and do you, are you with me? Are you there? The Bible says for a long time, so this was the position, this was the situation, for a time did not necessarily have the ability to change this matter. It lingered. It was an error, but it lingered for a long time. And it will yet linger, except a competent functionary of the kingdom of God is deployed that is, is equipped with the utensils of the kingdom of God. So it is, this is the stage, all right, for which we have Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 and 6, which is my emphasis uh, to support the fact that there is, there is good noise. Acts 8, 5. Are you there? Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing, there was audio and there was video. Sight and sound. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor, tell the next preacher close to you, sight we need to present, generate sight 
and sound. And it's finished. Come on, tell me. Bro, can't tell you. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. It doesn't matter how religious the city is. It might have a history of religiosity. The ancient missionaries landed there and all of Create what? Generate sight and sound and the attention of the city will be captured. So power is noisy. Sometimes God needs to get the attention of the entire Lagos. Then he makes noise. I want you to understand that noise, some some spiritual noise in this regard is healthy. In fact, if we, we can't generate this kind of noise we cannot maximize our potential. And the reason for which God gives liberty for such noise to be generated is in view of a situation of impersonation that is taking place in the land. And I've gone pretty much across Africa, nation by nation. And I can tell you that we have Simon the Sorcerers, people that are taking the glory that should be accorded, genuine men of God. In fact, I went to a certain place and the elders called me and told me the challenge that the young boys have gone to take power from Nigeria, take power from Ghana, take power from, um, from Senegal, take power from uh, Benin Republic. Those were the sensitive nations that were mentioned. Nigeria was number one. On the list, in the sequence. So if, I don't know in what order. Uh, maybe ascending or descending. I don't know, but. <laughs> Benin Republic, you all know that one. The, the only surviving voodoo market on Africa from the 15th century. It, okay. May, may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So they go there and get power. So the elder said, they have been humiliated. Because most of their members have decamped. And they have held the fort, uh, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and the reign of Christ over the hearts of men. These ones don't even preach anything. But they can create sight and they can make sound. And that's how God ordained it. That we'll be creators of sight and sound. And if we cannot generate sight and sound, we may not be able to Capture the attention that is needed to divert the philosophy of the city. And the people with one accord gave heed unto him. Gave heed unto those things which spirits spake. They gave heed. They they were willing to sit under the scourge of the gospel of the kingdom because they were exposed to what? Sight and sound. We know your message is true. It's accurate. And you are deploying it with good intentions. But if we are going to capture the attention of the city, this is how our ancestors did it. Next verse, verse 7. For unclean spirit crying with a loud voice. This is supposed to be part of the service. Crying with what? Meanwhile, I forgot, I forgot to add that um, the 10 hour prayer meeting I was talking about is generated from the book of Acts chapter 5. We try to see a typical portrait of the scenario of an apostolic service, what they call an apostolic meeting. Right? So they started opening prayer, praise and worship, and then Peter was giving witness, giving witness. And a time came when they had to give offerings. That was when Ananias showed up. It's, that was like three hours into the service. With his own seed. And then the Holy Spirit intercepted him. And then a discussion took place. He said, how did it occur to you? How did it appear in your heart for you to decide to sin against the Holy Ghost? So that discussion took place. The man denied. The man died. A burial ceremony was conducted. The service was still going on. You, you, you understand what I'm talking about? Now, if you are going to matter at all, eh, you must learn how to spend time in God's presence 
And there are days, there are days when meetings are long. Now, you see, our computer services will not produce much. The wife now came, now came after conquering, hold up from Alaba, conquering from Bagada, conquering. Then she now showed up, and then and then they brought her, and her case came up too. Hey, why? Hey, hey. She followed uh, uh, another burial ceremony was conducted, and the service was still on, and people were bringing offerings. That was when Joseph sold his only land, and he put it. At the apostles' feet. When they checked it in the spirit, they changed his name to Barnabas. So they had time for individual administration. You will be called. So his father didn't give him Barnabas. So you are the son of consolation. We are in a time of need. And this sacrifice was designed to meet that need. Your name has changed. You are Joseph. Eventually, he grows to become a recipient of the same apostolic spirit that was upon Peter. Their service, their services created things. He created things and he killed things. He killed and he made a life. So let's stop there. Just for your consumption. They say, unclean spirits cried out with a loud voice. This is a typical Holy Ghost invasion meeting. And, and came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lamed were healed. This is a summary of the meeting. Because this guy had an explosive device that was very boisterous. He caught the attention of the city. And then you will find out subsequently that even the sorcerer saw a dimension of power that would have bested his own realm. He himself posed to be a believer. You see, we can shut that. Oh my God. Let us not allow the tears grow side by side us. Through power, we have the ability to shut down voices that should not be speaking. And you know, human beings are analytical. Huh? Oh, you're not with me. Human beings are analytical. They'll say, okay, what you are doing is more than this one. That is based on our analysis. If we are sons of light, then we can generate capacity that darkness cannot generate. That's the reason for the book of Daniel. The astrologers, the Chaldeans, the magicians, the sorcerers, there were dimensions of secrets that they could not download, they could not access. And that was what made Daniel to stand out. Even though he had employment, they were all employed into the ministry of wisdom of Babylon. That day, Daniel was isolated from the rest of the gang because an excellent spirit was found in him. He had access to dimensions that Chaldeans could not access. He could see things that sorcerers could not decode. It is in the supernatural that you'll be isolated. That, ah! This man, the way he operates, these people cannot operate like that. And it is something that is visible, it's something that you can analyze. Simon himself knew he was out of business, so he came and pretended to be a disciple. May the Lord give you the ability to make noise. Amen. Such noise that will cancel noise. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So power is explosive. It's boisterous. It's an explosive device. And we must have accommodation in the administration of things to embrace disruptiveness of power. Number two, on the authority side, authority is not noisy. Authority is judicial. And so we need to look at Luke chapter 13. Authority is judicial in nature. Luke chapter 13 verse 11. The people on the screen, please help me. Luke 13 verse number 11. And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 
18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to walk, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. This was Jesus' defense for his actions. And I'd like us to look at it critically. Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? That's the question. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, now, wait, don't, don't rush that scripture. Don't rush. Who are you? In New Testament definition, the same designation this woman has is what you have. According to the book of the Galatians chapter 3, we are descendants of Abraham. We are children of Abraham by faith. Hallelujah. Do you realize that a woman that was a child, a daughter of Abraham was bound? Okay, you don't want that. Okay, let's leave that. Mm. I'm bound for 18 years. Okay. I'm, uh, it's obvious from the feedback I've gotten, it's obvious you don't like this part. So, we, we, we put... We, We'll put an asterisk there for, for now. We'll put an asterisk there for now. All right? And then we'll proceed. She was bound for 18 years and she was a daughter of Abraham. And Jesus' justification for extending the healing hands to her on a Sabbath day was in view of the question that he asked. Is it wrong for you to lose your ox from the store and lead them to watering on a Sabbath day, obviously there was no response for that. It was quiet, including the, the, the chief of the synagogue, the master of the synagogue did not respond. It means uh, there's no issue with that. It's all right. In the same context, this woman is a daughter of Abraham. And in the eyes of Jesus, are you there? Are you there? Yes, sir. A daughter of Abraham should not bound. Should not be bound. So, Satan doesn't have the right to bind this woman, but Satan found a reason to bind her. I don't want to go there because I, you were already struggling. So, we'll, we'll, let's let's leave that. You may not know that people, some people in this room are bound. I, I know you'll not accept that because we are we are, we are, we are children of faith. We are. listen to me. Faith does not deny the presence of a mountain. If you have faith, as small as a grain of mustard seed, you will say unto. Okay, let's, let, let me leave it there. She was bound. If we introduce, oh, 35 minutes, if we introduce something here, some yokes will break. And that's not a, an amen matter. Uh, it's news. You don't listen to 7 o'clock news and say amen. <laughs> it's not amen. You're, the amen will not make it work. I am saying that if we introduce some utensils here, some yokes will break. Because, are you there? Yes. In this scripture, Jesus was functioning as a law enforcement agent. He had seen an illegality and he was empowered as an authority to change the illegality. So, are you there? So that was what the healing was about. It was a law enforcement agency to, to correct an anomaly. So in, in, you see, authority is judicial. 
After Jesus finished his defense, the man that was complaining about what was done kept quiet. It, it means that he was within the, 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 the scope of accuracy. So the argument ended. Authority is judicial. You find an illegality and you use authority to change it. And you'll find that Satan does not play according to the rules. He violates every, every law. So you see his presence rooted in violations. We need a man of authority that is equipped by the Holy Spirit to function in the capacity of a law enforcement agent to change things that Satan has put in place which is contrary to what is expected. It is possible for you to design things that are anomalies under the sun and not be equipped with the authority to change it. And you can hide behind doctrines and hide behind confessions. Meanwhile, faith does not deny the mountain. I can tell you from analysis that from, from the trends in my family, we don't live long. At least I know how old my, how long my dad lived. I know how long some of his brothers lived. So I had to go into warfare. Because if your, your dad went bald, guess what? You are going bald. Mm. Okay, you don't like me. Don't worry. Okay, okay, no. Let's, let's stay with doctrine. Let's stay there. It's safe. So when you know that that's the trend, you go and look, there's a certain oil I found in the UK. You spray it a little. It will, it will. You know you are going there. That's why you went for remedy. Do you understand? Huh? So the pattern was going to catch up with me. So I had to do something about it. Oh yes, in the spirit, I now found out why. The devil seemed to have so much authority in, in deciding how long people will live in the landscape, you can sit down there and be confessing. It, it, some even go the, to the extent of saying, no, it's not my portion, it's not my portion. Wake up. There are spiritual laws. They are, they are, you don't solve a legal issue by ignoring it. You must go to court. That's how they solve it. Well, let, let me just go back for now. Power is God's principle for conquering. If there's a territory that is overtaken by the adversary and God wants to snatch it back, he deploys power. Psalm 66 verse 3, he deploys power because he wants to reclaim. I know you are filled with the Holy Ghost, but it may be that your family... Uh, is rooted in the occultic. And there's a long line of dark priesthood that runs in that corridor. Now that you are born again, that territory must be conquered. And there is a, a utensil by which such territories that have held sway under the influence of darkness can be reclaimed. Power is that principle. He says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. So God came and saved you from that lineage because he's expecting you to be the seed that will release his grace and conquer what is obtainable in that domain. So that is the real testimony, not that you gave your life to Christ and from a terrible place and you have done nothing about it. I know you don't like my talk. If I'm not convinced the Lord wants me to say this, I will not be saying it. I process these words, process them before him. And that's why I'm saying it. 
through the greatness of thy power, thy enemies, they submit themselves to thee. It is through power that God conquers terrains, conquers territories. Except you want to be a victim. The way we fight here is that you go on the offensive. Because the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof. The world and them that dwell therein. God has a vast estate that is hoping that one of his sons, his daughters, will mature enough to manage. He's expecting that one of us will mature enough and become concerned about the estate of our father. Enough to take responsibility for his management. But through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit. There is no place that cannot be taken. We went to one of the regions in Ghana, Cape Coast. Most Ghanaian preachers will not even go there to preach. Most Ghanaian preachers will not go to the north. I've been to the north. They will not go to Volta. I've been there. They will not go to Cape Coast. These are the strongholds of the enemy. And when you finish preaching in the, in the night, don't sleep. Take up, you know those good chairs in the hotel room. Just take coffee and begin. You, they will come to you. They will check you out. Two o'clock uh, is, is a promise. <laughs> take that seat and begin to speak in tongues and wait. Just wait patiently. Wait patiently. Oh, we don't, you think you can give a blow and then that, have you ever watched wrestling and somebody won because he, he, he just gave a, a jab? That's not how they win. Like my brother, Pastor Austin, went to Ethiopia. Is it Ethiopia? And then, uh, what did you do in Ethiopia? I think he, 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 oh, he was preaching and he cursed the priest. The preacher, you were cursed in the name. He, 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 and then he went to sleep and then they came and almost choked him to death. Now, you don't punch, you don't, you, no wrestling bout ends because somebody gives a good blow and he secures a position, a, a, an accurate place to punch. No bout ends that way. It, it, oh God. We, 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 we don't know warfare. It's way after giving that blow, eh? It, go and take coffee. There we come in the night. Then you tell them that you are stronger in the night than in the daytime. <laughs> Endurance is the ability to outlast Satan. He called me in the morning. I said, this was the experience. I said, who told you? Yeah. So meanwhile, I, I told him what you gave was a blow and what the devil returned was hammer lock. Do you know hammer lock? <laughs> That's why you could not breathe and you could not say Jesus. He said, I, I, I told him the wrestling is on. Please help me tell your neighbor, you are not about to wrestle, you are in it now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Preach in Benin Republic and then you have a great outing on Friday night. Put on your boxers and wait on the seat. Because they have a very effective radar to scan the entire land. What entered? The ripple effect of what you did will reach the highest altar that is in that place. Through the greatness of thy power. Thy enemies will submit themselves unto thee. That's how it happens. If kingdom advances, then there are warriors that understand the way of power. Understand the way of power. Before too long, when you function that way, before too long, Satan will appear to you in the dream. And say, uh -uh, are we fighting? We can't, we can't resolve this thing. <laughs> Still, we can't talk about this. We can't discuss this thing. Because he, he is not capable of a frontal attack. He can't say, I'm coming to fight you. I will kill you by nine o'clock. It, and, and it, it comes to pass. He is not given unto him. It's not given unto him. So he needs to come and negotiate. Find a place of compromise. Because if you keep on, if you keep on going on like that, he will suffer losses that he will not recover from. And 
endurance is what? The ability to outlast the devil. When you put your hands to the plow, you don't look back. You fight for your life. We are too soft. We like to take things easy. Say, okay, let's just take it easy. No, I'm not soft. I'm not soft. I'll wake up in the night. We'll settle it in the night before the break of day. And the next morning, things will, 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 will work well. Things will work well in the morning. Because through the greatness of thy power, thy enemies, they do what? So, power is God's principle for conquering. And authority is God's principle for ruling. Ruling. You, you, you remember when you gave your life to Christ, the conviction of God was upon your heart. It was so intense. You were choking. And then you submitted to him. All right? You may not feel that conviction again that way. Because the principle, by that, that was power. That was reacting with your rebellion. And then the day you surrender, another principle kicks in. Which is government. And government, huh? if God, are you there? If God cannot exercise his authority over your life, it means that God cannot accomplish his divine purpose for your life. It is only by his exerting of his authority that there is hope for his divine purpose to be accomplished. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 reveals the, the entire purpose of time. The entire purpose of time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. You will see the apostle he is speaking from, from the, this is the revelation he got in Arabia that took him 17 years to find utterance to communicate. In this delivery, he, he gives us the, the chapter of the eternal purpose. He both had hindsight and foresight. It's a full lattice of revelation. That this man is uncovering in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And in verse 10, he tells us the purpose of time. He said that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. That means everything must be under the administration of the Christ. That's what he's doing in time. The reason why he's rebuking you, the reason why he's, he's, he's registering his displeasure is so that you can line up. And remain under the administration of the Christ. Because anything that is not under that administration is a loose end. It has no place in the future to come. He can conquer by power, but he will rule by authority. So every day you wake up, you must say to him, you are my king today. Rebuke me. Manipulate me. Impress upon my heart that I might know your will, that I might serve your will. Such is the way of a genuine believer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we don't do what is raining. We don't do what is trending. Thank God for trending things. Thank God for views and likes. They are good because there's a temptation for you to evaluate your impact by views and likes. Uh, It means that you have drank of the king's cup. The parameters of the world system have become your own parameters of judgment. There's something wrong with your analysis and your vista. You are looking from the wrong window. But it's good to have views. It's good to have likes. But it's better to be under the authority of the Christ. And that you are a conduit through which his will is served. That means you are great in the sight of God. Hallelujah. So God rules by authority. When last did he exert his authority on your finances? Say for this year, this is how you are going to spend And you keep a record of it so that you can present it to him at the end of the year. I have done as you have said. Because the secret to prosperity 
is that we hearken unto the voice of the Lord our God and we obey his commandments. Every form of prosperity that is taught that negates the solid pillar of government and obedience is a doctrine of mammon. It was designed to, to enlarge the souls of men in appetites of vanity. The way we prosper is different. The way we become relevant is different. Because for the sons of God, it is their father that ordains, preordains their time of manifestation. The way we show up is different. Yes, even though we put our, our stuff on YouTube, we put it on Facebook and all of that, but we know the way we show up. God will not be willing to advertise a man that is not solidly aligned with his government. Because what he will be advertising will be traces of the fallen man, the old man. Hallelujah. Are you actually situated under the influence of his government? Because this is what he's doing in the whole of time. The whole of time. You don't marry a woman because she is the beauty queen of Lagos. You marry a woman because the spirit of Christ that is designed to teach you how to live impressed upon your heart that you have compatibility with this person to fulfill a corporate destiny. It goes beyond logic. Once upon a time in my life, because of my, my job, I was away from home for 11 years. It's only God that knew that this woman will not leave me. We're making money. Offshore. Offshore in the tank farm. Inhaling gases. <laughs> Jesus. But Jehovah knew the woman. In fact, my exit to Lagos, because they will post you, post you, it become foolishness for you to be moving your family. Your children will never have any direct school. So we had to decide to remain in Benue State, where the Lord sent us. Me, I will be moving and coming back. It happened for 11 years. I was not at home. Because God was involved, my absence led to her spirituality. Because the demons I used to fight, she was alone. Ah! She woke up. Started dry fasting. Say, yes, she has gone on dry. Said, oh, oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. So it's three days dry. And I say, yeah, that's the way of. Ah, he works strong in spirit. Mm. Until she became used to dry fasting. Started developing her own muscles. The day of talk is gone. The day of talk is gone. We, Simon the sorcerer is boasting on our shores. Boasting. And you are God's instrument. It is by your hand that his kingdom will be extended, his influence will be extended in the earth. He conquers with power, but he rules. Which authority? Authority. Authority.